Sorry, we saw a big rally in stocks today, which may make you wonder, is the market simply shrugging off all those default concerns from Europe? My next guest just recently wrote a report entitled The Biggest Losers, Who Gets Hurt from a Greek Default or Restructuring? He's also the author of The Accelerating Decline in America's High-Skilled Workforce, and he's a research fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics, Jacob Kirkgaard. Welcome to Taking Stock on Bloomberg. My pleasure. Uh, Jacob, so just outline for us some of the possibilities. I mean, let's say the European Central Bank accepts Greek debt as collateral for loans to other banks. Who actually wins and loses from this kind of arrangement? Well, the real question is here, what happens, uh, you know, in the event of a, of a credit event and a write down on the principle of the of this collateral? Because obviously the ECB can choose to paper over it and just not mark it to market. But uh, ultimately, somehow this uh, loss on the ECB balance sheet will have to be distributed among the owners of the ECB, which ultimately, of course, means the um, the Eurozone member countries. And that raises this interesting dynamic that the countries whose private banking sector has the biggest exposure to Greece obviously also has the biggest incentive to uh, basically dump, if you like, this, uh, these bonds with the ECB. Uh, they will actually benefit from this, whereas the countries that have banks with relatively little exposure to Greece, such as, ironically, Spain and Italy, they will lose uh, tremendously from this kind of transaction because they will be forced probably to pay more uh, through their share of the ECB uh, paid up capital than they would uh, than their private banks would have lost uh, without the ECB stepping in. All right, so Jacob, so which bank, which country's banks are really on the hook here if the ECB doesn't come riding to the rescue? Well, first and foremost, if you believe the data from the uh, BIS in uh, Switzerland is really uh, uh, French banks, which has a total ultimate risk uh, uh, exposure at the end of 2009, which was the latest available data, of, of upward to uh, 80 billion uh, U.S. dollars, mostly through uh, um, subsidiaries of French banks uh, in Greece, where both Crédit uh, Agricole and uh, Société General own uh, major uh, Greek banking franchises. So does Similarly, this? Similarly, Germany. Oh, sorry. Go, no, go ahead. I beg your pardon. Other yeah, Germany is the other uh, principal uh, country exposed here with a total exposure, according to these data, of about 45 billion U.S. dollars. Um, and th then there is a third interesting issue, uh, which uh, is this fact that there was a very large decline in the uh, revealed exposure of Switzerland uh, between Q3 and Q4, uh, which uh, most likely refers to a change uh, in the geographic registration of the ultimate uh, parent company of a third uh, large Greek bank called EFG Eurobank, which switched from uh, its residence from uh, Geneva uh, in Switzerland to Luxembourg, which I'm sure not, will not be something that uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, the head of the Eurozone, will necessarily be very uh, uh, pleased about. So, Jacob, is there going to be any mudslinging between the politicians in Europe? I mean, are we going to see the prime minister, let's say, of Italy or Spain go head to head with uh, President Sarkozy of France in order to figure out who actually is going to shoulder all of this bad debt? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think ultimately that is uh, essentially what you're seeing play out uh, behind the scenes, because this is precisely the kind of, you know, passing the buck, if you like, among uh, the major Eurozone countries that is ultimately, I think, behind this uh, clearly in uh, inability of the Eurozone to come together and organize what is, uh, you know, a required uh, restructuring of Greek debt. Now, what does this mean when we talk about passing the euro? Is it different than passing the buck? Because it seems as though Irish banks, they would come off huge losers if nothing is really done to help Greece. Isn't that sort of an irony? It's going to make the situation in Ireland even worse. 
Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, both in the case of Ireland as well as Portugal, in fact, also have significant exposures in their private banking sectors to Greek debt, which, of course, uh, in the case of Ireland, <laughs> you know, where most of the private uh, banking system is already owned uh, by the uh, Irish taxpayers, that's not going to please the uh, Irish prime minister uh, one bit. Talk about what's going on inside of German politics, because isn't there a debate about whether German citizens get a kind of tax cut or whether they use that money to bail out the Greek government? Uh, yeah, most certainly. This is an ongoing uh, political debate. And I think right now you have this, this irony that uh, the latest proposals coming out uh, of the German parliament is that you actually want to attach an additional level of conditionality to a German contribution uh, to the overall Eurozone IMF package, which would require that private banks uh, actually also uh, participate uh, in this uh, bailout package, meaning they would essentially force private banks to take uh, a haircut before uh, German public money uh, is sent to Greece. And, and that's the kind of thing which, while I, as I said, ultimately believe this is necessary, can be very destabilizing in the short term uh, for financial markets because it basically raises the issue about whether or not German, the German parliament will ultimately approve German participation uh, in this deal, which could uh, come to a vote as soon as next week. All right. I want to thank you very much, Jacob Kirkgaard. He is a research fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics talking about euro debt.